Do you eat to live or live to eat? It's a really important question to ask yourself if you're concerned about your health, weight and eating habits in general. While we're bombarded with advice and information on how to eat, what to eat and when to eat, do we really understand what is needed to keep our bodies and minds functioning and in tip-top shape? On today's Food Matters, we'll find out about the physiology of eating and what effect food has on our bodies once it has passed our lips. I'm joined by registered nutritionist Lebo Matsejo Roda. Lebo, thank you so much for your time. So what role does eating play physiologically? Or let's put it simply, what happens to our bodies when we eat? The physiology of eating explains how the body uses the nutrients we eat from different food groups or different types of food. And then how the body uses the nutrients within the food, how the body digests the food and uh, uses the food to, to help the body perform the way it's supposed to perform on its optimal function. So what happens to our bodies when we eat too little or we eat too much or we actually don't eat the right thing, we don't get the right nutrition? First, we, we have to understand that we don't just eat to fill our tummies. We eat for a certain purpose. For the body to function on its optimal level, it requires certain nutrients at the right amount and at the right time at different stages of life, right from birth, right through to infancy, to toddler stage, adolescent stage, adulthood, and so forth. So it requires certain amounts of nutrients to function in its optimum. So when the body does not receive or when, when we don't eat the right food at the right amount, there are certain consequences to that which can result in unwanted health conditions. For example, somebody eats food that are less in nutrients that are required, that can result in undernutrition. And if somebody eats food more than what the body requires, actually, they can develop what we call overweight and obesity. So explain to us how a balanced diet contributes to an overall healthy and active lifestyle. When we talk about healthy balanced diet, we talk about eating food items from different food groups. Whole grains, for example, are very key because they form a base of a healthy meal. And from, for whole grains, I'm referring to brown bread, popcorns, if it's a snack, and so forth. In addition to that, fruits and vegetables play a key role. They have to form part of the, the healthy diet. So every day we need to have food from that group, from the fruits and vegetable group. Protein as well is very key, the healthier lean protein types of food as well as from the milk group. So we have a food plate that actually guide us to say half of the plate should contain food from the fruit and vegetable group. And uh, the other half we divide it as well into a quarter and quarter. So that would be for protein as well as the starch. So once you understand that, then you know exactly that on my plate, what has to be more is the vegetable part of the, from the food groups. Not a single food can provide a variety of nutrients. So we must eat from a variety of groups and drink lots of clean, safe water every day. In addition to that, exercise or keeping moving is very important. So striking a balance between energy input and energy output is very key. What you eat, you need to use that energy through exercise. If it's not exercise, if it's not walking, um, then it should be keeping busy in the house, but it's important that uh, we avoid being um, leading a sedentary lifestyle. So it's not just sportsmen and women who need to fuel their bodies correctly to ensure optimal performance. Much like a car, we all need to be putting the right kinds of food into our bodies to make sure that we perform at our best. If we don't, we might just find ourselves broken down on the side of the road. Thank you.